guys! How's it going today? Chelsea Face here. I'm very, very excited because I haven't made a house tour yet because we're still unpacking boxes. But I moved into a new home. I haven't really talked about that here because a lot of things have been going on in my life. And I want to give a like legit tour of when it's unpacked and everything. It's not like a fancy, fancy house, but we're renting it and it is our first home. So I'm very, very, very excited about it. Um, it's a big deal for us. It's a big part of our lives now and I'm just so happy. It's pet friendly. I've got so many books that I need to put in a bookshelf, but I have no bookshelves to use yet. All of the bookshelves I have are currently being used for other things. And I would like to get some white bookshelves, like some decent bookshelves for my collection so far. I think I might need two shelves so far. I don't have a huge collection and I'm looking at it right now. But anyways, I wanted to start a new reading vlog before I get to film that. And I don't have a setup yet or anything, so forgive the weird quality and I'm trying to save up for a new camera. So maybe we'll be able to get off of my crappy phone camera after a little while because this phone is bad, y'all. I don't know if you can't tell, but it's bad. I am going to start trying to read Devil's Wake. This is a novel by Stephen Barnes and Tenenarav Du. I'll try to look up how to pronounce this, and I will link this book in the description if you want to purchase it yourself or read about it. It says on the front, An infection is spreading with lightning speed, tearing apart families, destroying civilizations as we understand it. This was a book I picked up at a sale, um, very, very cheap, but it is Atria. It's old. It's in pretty rough condition, but um, I think original price is $15 and then $17 Canadian. Um, on the back it says, what happens when an unprecedented infection sweeps the world? Leaving the earth on the brink of the apocalypse. Hmm, sounds like it's gonna be a little close to home. But this infection goes far beyond disease, beyond even the nightmare images of walking dead or flesh-eating ghouls. The infected are turning into creatures unlike anything ever dreamed of. More complex, more mysterious, and more deadly. Trapped in the northwestern United States as winter begins to fall, Terry and Kendra have only one choice. They and their friends must cross a thousand miles of no man's land in a rickety school bus battling ravenous hordes human raiders, and their own fears. In the midst of apocalypse, they find something no one could have anticipated. Love. It sounds interesting. I was looking for some black writers and black stories because I can diversify my shelves a little bit more. So this is one that I read about and then I just so happened to see it on sale. So that's why I got it. I do have a few more I want to purchase brand new just to help support the authors, but I have to get paid first. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will be adding some more books to that collection soon. And um, I'm very, very excited to do that. So I hope you enjoy this vlog and let's just jump into it. That first chapter is intense like it's already getting started and I'm like really excited about that because sometimes these books take way too long to get into like the infection part like the hysteria part and I'm excited that it's already started because I ain't got time for that. Kiddish, but we have a cage coming on Wednesday, and there her is. Her is a cutie. 
She's like sleeping right now. But uh, we have her in this big plastic tub for now. And we're getting her, we've already bought this big rabbit cage so that she has plenty of room to scoot it around. And I'm very, very excited. And she's very sweet. She was on me earlier when we got home. And she was like licking my chest right here. And it was really sweet and really cute. And I, I don't know, I love her already. What do you think so far? I think it's good. Never really thought about owning a hedgehog, but uh, I'm all about, you know, helping animals if uh, they need a place to be taken care of. And we looked into it. It seemed like we had the resources to take care of it and uh, needed a home. So Yeah. We, yeah. Already, we already pretty much buy all the food that she would eat. Um, everybody told us the kind of things they eat, and we Googled it and all that stuff. So we've done our research, and... Um, we already buy everything that it eats, so no, but no, we don't even have to buy extra stuff because it's, you know, already here. So I'm very excited for our new family member. I think it's a girl. Yeah, we haven't named her yet. So give me your suggestions. Hey guys, so far I am on page 96, chapter 12 of The Devil's, Devil's Wake. It's a zombie book. I know I probably already told you that. But, um, I just wanted to give you a quick little update on it. It is so fast. Like, I do appreciate that they don't take 20 chapters to just get to the infection. It pretty much just starts around the very beginning. And we see how it happens and how it starts to devolve and evolve and how society is crumbling. And yet there are still people who are, you know, selling and trading and doing things like that. So... At this point, people are kind of getting used to things. Sorry, there's also fireworks in the background. You're following a few different people as they are experiencing this part of, I think it's like five months after it started. So people are kind of getting used to it, but also like you're getting a hint of intelligence from these zombie creatures because some of them are able to talk. So it's, it's very interesting. And um, I really, really like it so far. I think that it moves a little too fast sometimes like you'll you'll go from like a tiny paragraph so much will happen but it's not bad it's just a little faster than what I'm used to I am liking it though yeah it's not too long of a book I feel like I'll get through it pretty quickly with how quickly they're going Forgive how I look. I just woke up, but I'm reading and I'm on page like 182 of this book. And I know this book was written like 2012 or something, but there's a part in it where they're talking about a character they think might be gay or bisexual or pan or something. And they're like, 
they're hoping that she goes both ways and I'm just like like they're hoping that she'll do guys too I don't know like that's such a icky thing to say in my opinion I just don't like that but so guys I finally finished Devil's Wake by Stephen Barnes and Tanana Reeve Du and I wanted to give you guys my final thoughts on it because I didn't necessarily give enough updates in my opinion so I'm just gonna do it this way I'm trying to find a good place to set the camera but okay I hope this camera angle works it's not the most attractive or flattering but we're gonna go with it um I just finished this and there are a couple of problematic things with it. It was written, I think, in 2012. I'll check that to be sure. Yeah, July 2012. Um, so it has aged a little bit, but it is a Own Voices Black Authors novel. And so I'm glad that I did pick it up because it is really good. It is really, really good. It is well written. I like how fast paced it was. I think a lot of novels that are horror or thriller base like this tend to take that long to get to the juicy good stuff and this one just straight up from the start was there going good strong I have really enjoyed that and appreciate that like you're not wasting my time with some stupid character development that could be happening during everything so for that I give it an A plus I love that part of it I might end up picking up the next book because I'm pretty sure this is a series um so that part has me intrigued to continue it possibly um, depends on if it was made. I haven't really looked into that, but I do think it was maybe even a movie too. I'm not sure, but I, I do recommend it for that. If you're interested in a zombie story, it's very similar to the pandemic that's going on in the U S right now or in the world, but the U S is kind of dumb and let it continue. But it's very similar to that. If it had gone further South and we had turned into zombies. So it hits close to home at the moment, so if you're not prepared for that, just know that that's a thing. But it is still really, really fun to read. I think that the characters are pretty young. I don't know how old the boys are, but the main girl character is like 16. And that's where the problematic issues come from. Because if you're not comfortable with underage romance or things being said to or about underage kids that's kind of in here. I mean, she never actually like had sex or anything, but there were a couple characters who thought about doing things with her or talked about doing things with her or whatever, like, or there were sexual things talked about concerning her. And so, you know, some people don't have a problem with that as long as it doesn't occur. And then some people have a problem with it being mentioned at all. So just be aware that that is in here. She never actually does anything, but it is discussed. And I'm thinking it might happen in the next book. Because, you know, the ending leads you to think so. The whole trip was very interesting. You have these kids who are all, I guess, students or campers for this camp of, you know, kids who are like juvie kids who are sent to this camp to, you know, better themselves and become better kids and like kind of get some readjustments in their attitudes because they've either committed a crime or they have a problem with authority or something like that or they've just done something they're not supposed to do. And um, so they all go to this camp and that's kind of where they are. They're on their way to the camp and they get there whenever all this breakout occurs. So they're all stuck together and then they meet this young girl and they stick together and they go through all these different checkpoints and they run into all these zombies and they find looters and pirates. And apparently there's like human trafficking going on in this world if they're a young woman. Um, that's a fear that you have. Pretty dark and scary stuff going on in this book. I really, really enjoyed how not super flowery the writing was in this because sometimes in a book, I get too wrapped up if the writing is too fancy and flowery. That's why I struggle with fantasy books. Um, it's not bad. It's not a bad way of writing and I really appreciate that as an aspect of writing, but I don't comprehend it very well. Maybe that's just something I'll develop as I read more YA fantasy and then I can graduate to adult fantasy. But this is more of like a fiction fantasy horror sci-fi kind of thing. And um, I think that the fact that it was straight to the point, easy to understand, made me enjoy it more because I could get everything that was happening. And I felt like I was watching, you know, an episode of The Walking Dead, but not a not as lame. So it is easy to understand. It's not something I think that people would struggle with reading. So it's easy to pick up. There's lots of death in this. Loss of parent. Loss of loved ones and friends. Um, tiny, tiny bits of animal abuse. But 
Some people might not even consider it animal abuse. There's a point in this whenever there's a character who appears to be gay. Um, they're kind of assuming that, first of all. And they make a joke about how I hope she swings both ways, you know, hoping that they can get some just because she might be bisexual or something. And that kind of bothers me a little bit because that's just... I don't know. I don't like that way of thinking when it's a protagonist talking that way. It just kind of seems something a villain would do. That's to each their own, I guess, on preference and everything. I just don't think that was very, very nice to say and very um, acceptable in my opinion. But like I said, this was made in 2012 and things have changed. Overall, I think it's a good book. I think that there are good things and bad things about it. But overall, I think the good outweigh the bad. So I think you should check it out if you're interested in a zombie horror that is pretty similar to the pandemic. I think these authors are very talented and I definitely want to look into books that they've written in the past. And it doesn't necessarily leave you on a cliffhanger, but it does leave you to think that there is something coming future. So I do think that um, it's a series. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, please consider checking out this book. It is older, so you probably could find it used or you could buy it brand new and support the authors, which I highly recommend. I plan on buying a new copy because this one was not in good condition, so I plan on buying a brand new one just because. And uh, possibly picking up the sequel if there is one. But I uh, look kind of nappy today because I haven't showered yet. <laughs> but I will, promise. I hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog. Let me know if you want more vlogs in the future. I do enjoy putting like my real life into these. It's a lot of fun. I just like reviewing books, especially books that I've never heard anyone talk about. Like I had to do a lot of research on this book just to find out how to pronounce their names and who the authors were because I had never heard of them. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I put out bookish content every single week and I just really enjoy talking about books with you guys. I'm excited to start my next book too, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day and...